All right, so the Ches on the base, 98b. <coughs> After describing Mashiach's role as king and as teacher, political leader and a religious leader, We have a very uh, interesting discussion, and the Gemara is going to get after this discussion into the length of how long the Messianic era lasts. But the following is a very interesting. Uh, I'm not fully sure yet what to make of it. I have some idea, and we'll, I'll share it with you, and you'll tell me what you think. Last two lines. Last, yeah, second to last lines of the Chesed Bay is 98b. Doris Rabbi Simloi. Rabbi Simloi expounded. My what's the, what's the meaning of the verse? In Amos. Hoi, which means like, whoa, or like, oi. So it's like a great sigh. Hamasav mesyei Hashem. You guys are looking forward to the day of God. You're looking forward to the Messianic revelation. Why would you want the day, the day of God's revelation? What do you want it for? It's darkness and not light. End quote. That's the answer. End quote. So what does this verse mean? The day of God is darkness, not light? What is that? So explains every Simloi. Mashal Tarnago Atlaf. I think that's pronounced it. Atalef. Yeah, an example is by he explains by analogy of a of a uh, uh, a chicken, Tarnago, and a bat. Bat lives in the darkness, and that's how they see, specifically in the darkness. And a chicken sees the light, obviously. Shem and the and the two of them were looking forward to light time. So I'm like, how do you pronounce it? At the lake. At the lake, the chicken says to the bat. It's the rooster. The rooster says to the bat. The crows are there. Yeah. I mean, it's I'm looking forward to the light to the morning. Because to me, it becomes light. I can see. But but you, Lamalach Ar, Ar, why we want the light? That'll ruin your vision. That's why bats are active at night. Yep. So let's finish the Gemara and I'll tell you what, I, what, what, what could be perhaps said. Behind the Amr Lei. And this would explain the conversation between this heretic and Rebo. A Masa Asim Mashiach. When's Mashiach going to come? Is what this heretic asked Rebo. On my leg, so Rabbi Bo said, kind of answering not just the question but answering him. When darkness, morning, encompasses these kinds of people, meaning people like you, heretics, when darkness engulfs you, that's when Mashiach is going to come. On my leg, you quietly. You're cursing me. What did I do to you? Why are you cursing me? Telling me Mashiach is going to come when I'm going to be engulfed in darkness. Amalei, so Abba said, look, it's not my fault. Karaksiv, it's a verse. The verse reads, Yeshaya, Kin yachasa aretz. Darkness will cover the land, or conceal the land. Barofel, Arofel is like deep darkness. Lo'umim will be upon the nations. Va'alech, 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 and upon you, the Jewish people. Yizrach el shall sign light. Ve'kvoidu alech ayira, and God's glory will, will be exposed to you. End of this uh, comment in the Gemara. So what does this mean? I, I, there's two ways, two ways I've been thinking about it. And one way is that because we've been saying till now, as we've been describing at length, that Mashiach's coming is not an uh, unrelated event, but rather the sum total of our time here in exile. It's the ultimate goal towards which we are working. So that would mean that your experience of Mish- let me reframe that the revelation of divine truth to the point that it is seen. We've talked about it before. One of the one of the uh, descriptions of Shia's time is vision, as opposed to hearing. That we're going to see Hashem ein by nida. We'll see God eye to eye. V'nigl kvod Hashem, and the God, the, the glory of Hashem is revealed in such a way that we see it. Now when you see something, you and I look at a painting, we both see the same painting, we see it. Right? The question becomes, to what degree we appreciate that vision? And therefore, I guess what the Gemara is saying is, 
is that you will be, the bat is in the same light that the chicken is. It's not different light. The question is, to what degree you can appreciate it. Or, another way of putting it is, how painful a person's lack of appreciation of that revelation could be painful. A better way of putting it. Meaning, if a person lives in an exile state where he sees the darkness as light, like a bat, uh, what's there's a Lushen? The person assumes that darkness is light. In other words, and even in a time of exile, the challenge is in a time of darkness to remember what is light and what is darkness. And to remember the fact that we don't feel and see godliness is in and of itself a darkness. And then when the light arrives, we'll appreciate it. But if we see materialism as our light, what's the light in our lives? Materialism. And then one day, the light's turned on, and we see that everything we've been chasing is actually darkness. Then that light can become blinding. Eventually, our eyes will adjust and will appreciate the Messianic revelation also. But the transition could be... Uh, severe. It could be somewhat severe. And it's mitigated by almost remembering that you are in darkness now. All right? We mentioned this before, there's this expression of... Oh, no, we mentioned this in Shabbos, in the Tanya Shir. This expression of... A double demi double darkness. What does double darkness mean? It's dark or it's not dark. What's double darkness? So double darkness means not only are you in the dark, but you assume the darkness is light. So not only is there concealment that you don't see godliness, <coughs> but you don't even realize it's concealment. So the concealment itself is concealed for you. Now, this is one thing where a person is living a materialistic life, but at least he appreciates that, you know, this is not the BN, the be all and, what's the expression? Be all and all. But then there's another way of living where a person assumes this is it. The darkness, materialism, and uh, pursuit of pleasure, that is the light. This is what he's chasing. This is the light in life and meaning he's pursuing. In this case, the person's darkness has become his light. The reality of darkness has become his light, like the bat. And when the light's turned on, it could be blinding. For him. Like, for him. So, so he's going to be in the, people. That's right, he'll be in the same revelation. And I think that's what I think this way of, of understanding this. The same revelation is the same for everybody. The question is, and during the time of, time of exile, are we adjusting our eyes to remember that there's a greater light to be seen? There, this, what we're chasing here in this world is not, the, is not it. This is, this, is, this is concealment. And that in and of itself becomes a way in which we can transition to a time of full revelation of godliness. Seems One way of thinking about it. There's also different colors of black. There are different colors. Very, very black, where you don't see anything. That's Cheshach Vairafel, yeah. But it can be black and then get used to black darkness, or dark, and can be used to the darkness, yeah. and that's our light. Yeah, so I guess it's part of the challenge, is to refuse to get used to the di- darkness of exile. And the more we resist the temptation to get used to the darkness of exile, the more we'll be able to adjust into the light of the Messianic era. That's one way of, uh, of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is completely in reverse. That when, when Mashiach comes, <coughs> there's this hadyan. He'll come this, from this direction. This hadyan yom, which says, the famous hadyan yom, that when Mashiach comes, we're going to miss the days of exile. Why are we going to miss the days of exile? Because when Mashiach comes, we won't have the same free choices. There won't be the struggle to serve God. Because it's all light. But um, in, in times of exile, where we have to struggle to serve Hashem, there's a greater commitment, there's a greater... Uh, uh, um, merit? Merit is like a... <coughs> merit, yeah, there's a greater commitment, there's a greater enthusiasm in our service of Hashem precisely because... Investment. It's a greater investment, that's the word, precisely because we have to struggle to see it. Yeah. So in a way, you might say that the light of Mashiach itself is a darkness in that you no longer have to seek out the light. Right? The chicken who's in the dark is constantly seeking light. And then it wants the light when it arrives. Right? But once Mashiach arrives and the light is open and available, there's no more seeking. And then you, the bat, who in the darkness wasn't even seeking the light, what did you get? 
You were just transplanted from a place of darkness where you weren't seeking the light, and now you're in full light. And now what? Can't we use the darkness as a metaphor? It is a metaphor, not literal darkness. Yeah, because now, compared to what we know of, or what we think we know of mess messianic year, era, we're in the dark now. That's what I'm talking about, like, precisely. It is a metaphor, it's literally dark. Yeah. But it's all a metaphor. Yeah, anyway, the, uh, sorry? Free choice is, is as great as now. Precisely because of the darkness. Right. But again, it connects back to the first thing I was saying, which is your, <coughs> your, free, your free choice in darkness is only valuable if you understand that you're actually in darkness. If you think that you're walking around in the light, then what are you choosing? There's nothing to choose. This is it. It's done. It's good. Right? You're only, you're only, the, the, the free choice and the struggle in the darkness of exile is only when a person remembers that you're in darkness and you need to struggle for something greater. And then when that greatness comes, now you're excited, you're happy. That's what you're doing now. That's correct. That's correct. That's precisely what I'm, well, how I'm understanding this Gemara. haven't seen this written anywhere, but that's my suggested uh, way of reading this Gemara. It seems, it seems pretty straightforward to me. Anyway, running out of time, but tomorrow, God willing, very fascinating Gemara, where the Gemara is going to give us a number of different uh, caps. Like, how long is she going to be? How long was just going to be? Like a time frame of how long it's going to last. Some of it's not very long. <laughs> and some of it's a little bit longer. So I've been looking to try to, I'll try, I'm going to look again some more. But I found uh, one comment from there about one of the... The Messianic era. How long the Messianic era is going to last. And I've been looking to find some more comments specifically from the Rebbe on, on, on what this is. I found one. And I'm going to use that one comment from the Rebbe. I'll try to look for more today, God willing. But I'm going to use that one comment from the Rebbe about how long the lasts, about one of them about one of these comments here. I'm going to use that as a framework to try to explain and understand some of the other uh, time frames I've mentioned in the Gemara tomorrow. A bunch of different opinions. How long it's going to last? 70 years, 40 years, three generations, whatever it is. Okay. Just read the, king, the, uh, the portion of kings in the, uh, in the Tanakh. In Malachim? Yeah, no, in the Tanakh. You, the Book of Kings. Him, and he was, everybody was perfect for 40 years and then the king died, and then they fell back. And yeah. Another king came. They were good for forty years or fifty years, and they fell back. Yeah. And the same. That's going to a similar a similar comment is going to come up in the Gemara tomorrow. Good morning. Similar to Sinai. Forty too. years. Yeah. yeah. All right. Have a wonderful day, everybody.